Hi guys, it's Amy from Now Polish Baby 90 and welcome to today's video. Today I'm filming an intro to a video that I'm not sure how long it's going to take me and at this point I'm not so sure what I'm going to call it. But basically um, I've been speaking a lot about the fact that I need to reorganise my polish and I'm getting a third helmer. So I thought it would be fun to take you guys on the ride with me. I actually have bought the third helmer today. So I'm going to show a little bit of footage about me putting the helmer together and then you can look at my overview mess and collection and hope help me get it tied so like I say, I'm not sure where this video is going to go or what I'm going to do with it really, but this is this is where we're going to start and I will be in a different outfit and summarising something different when we've got to the end of the helm we're making and organising. So let's just look at the footage that I create. So this is I guess a quick overview of what we're dealing with at the moment. So I currently have the two helmers from Ikea. One's in like a white and one's in an off-white. I think they must have changed the colour when I was um, in between getting them. So I have picked up another one which is... I'm hoping it's this colour so I can keep these two together and move this one. So at the moment this is all a mess. Basically this half is to be swatched. And this is all stuff that I've swatched that has no space to go away. But prepare yourselves because... It continues. So down here I literally have packets of polishes in PR, I have my me box, I have a polish con bag, um, ignore that, that's meant to live there, that's my empties bag. But so all of this and all of this and all of this is stuff that needs to be packed away and sorted and yeah. We've got a lot of organisation ahead of us to get this organised but I think first of all we should start with building the third helmer um, because I think that's a good place to start so let's do this. So it is a Tuesday rainy night and I've decided today is the day to build the third helmer. The cats will be running in the background of this. I'm sorry if I don't know that great and if the lighting isn't that great but I'm in my living room because it's the biggest, probably one of the biggest spaces I have and also my husband will be over there in a minute and can hopefully help me. So about the IKEA helmer, they do retail for £25. You can pick them up in store or online. The current colour range they're doing is the off-white which is what I have right now and I believe one of my others is off-white and one of them is true white. You can also get it in a black and a green at the moment. They previously did do red which I have seen on Amazon occasionally but they do retail for a lot more um, but the colour current colours is green, black and off white. So um, this is my third time building one so I'm hoping to not take too too long however these instructions and everything are kind of hard to follow so let's dig into the package and we'll check back in once I'm in and broken into this packaging. The most frustrating thing about building an IKEA helmet is the instructions for me. The IKEA instructions never include details of any words or anything. It's all just pictures, I guess, so it's available in any language, but it's very frustrating sometimes. Um, the only implement you need to build your helmet is a Phillips screwdriver, the one that's got the little cross on the end. So I'm going to dig one of those out and then I'm going to get going. And I'll probably check in like every five to ten minutes and my aim is to do this in under half an hour. I feel that might be quite a task, but let's just give it a go. I would say maybe I am getting better with the more I have, because I think this is probably taking me just over five minutes, and I've managed to get the runners in and the two legs. It's just out of camera shot, and the two legs in the bottom there. The hardest thing that I find about building these is getting the runners on, because you don't want to get them in the wrong way, which I think is where I've gone up wrong many times before when I previously made them. So I'm just going to get my lovely assistant behind me to help me stand this up, and then you'll probably see the outer shell of what you recognise as an Ikea helmet. Glamour assistant. What's the top? What's the bottom? She goes. Put that in. Yeah, and I think I just bend down the. Yeah, bend those bits in. Shame you have to go do the top as well. No, I just got to do this for now. All good? Let me slide this on the top. Bye, fans. So we're pretty much nearly there, we've built the outside, um, it is very fiddly, but it was just as bad as I remembered pretty much, they are really fiddly, you do have to take your time with them and make sure you don't um, misread the instructions like I normally do because I try and rush my way through things, so good thing my husband was here to help me. Um, the drawers are a lot easier to make, it is more the actual body of the helmet that is harder to mess up, but it's all worth it because it's just, just great storage at the end of it. 
Most of what you need to do is just not a lot of actual screwdrivering. Most of it is just um, bending the plastic to fit, a uh, metal rather. It's quite a um, bendable metal, so it's quite a lot of just folding and stuff like that. So let me just finish this drawer and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So it is literally for the drawers, just these things that you use your strength and bend. And then you just pop a front and a back on and the handle. So the drawers are considerably easier. It's much simpler instructions to follow. Um, but yeah, we're nearly there. I'll check back in pretty much when it's done. Not long left to go. So here we have it all done. It probably did take me a little bit longer than what I was hoping. I was hoping for 30 minutes. It probably took about 40. Um, I had to, well, my husband actually remade one of the drawers for me because I made them wrong because so I could not follow the simple instructions. Um, yeah, it's made. It took about 40 minutes. I would say that you would need someone to do it with you just because some of the bits, especially sliding the two, the main frame of it together, it's probably just a two-man fiddly job. Um, and there's not a whole lot of screwdriver involved, it's mainly just like I say, flimsy in the, pla the plastic, the metal prongs in, um, only really the handles and the wheels that were um, needing a screwdriver. The wheels are optional, you don't have to put them on, um, I, as a preference, do put them on, just because I know if I don't put them on, I will lose them somewhere in my house. So I put them on, if I come to a point where I don't need them, or I want to stack them, then I obviously can take them off, you have that option. So. Let's check back in when I get round to the organising of the polish. Like I said, this is the current overview of what we have. So I thought I'd just go through like draw by draw and give a quick overview so I can give like a before and after. So in the first draw, nothing's really changed since my last update video. It's all random nail care. I then have one full draw of china glaze, which I need to expand. I have then um, two... Oh, full drawers of, or I have a, a couple of odd china glaze down here but then other than that this is all OPI I then have another drawer of OPI so I'm definitely going to need to expand into having two drawers of china glaze and three of OPI after the rearrangement I then have a drawer of drugstore so it's mainly Models Own Sally Hansen Barry M um, IZ London Beauty and then there's like odd ones in here as well from uh, Birch boxes and from me boxes. This bottom drawer also needs to be rearranged. It's currently a mixture of things that I'm saving for my 4K giveaway, nail art items, and also cards and um, notes from subscribers and indie makers. So that definitely needs to have a reshuffle. I might just take the giveaway stuff out because that might make more sense. Right, over into Helmer number two. Um, this top one is all Illamasqua, Butter London, Deborah Lippman, and Essie. Draw number two is all indies and it's mainly dollish polish, jindy nails, what else have I got? Different dimension, I've got my frenzies, I think I've got hair polish in here. So a real assortment but the majority of this, like you can see these four rows here, are all dollish polish. On to the next drawer and this one is, it was meant to be British indies, which it pretty much is. We have dangle foot down here, we have a lot of polish me royalty, we then have princess nail lacquer in here, we have some freckles in here, so, or princess nail lacquer, they're all in here. Then on the, over on the right here we have some glitter days, we have some um, wicked polish, we have um, sweetheart lacquer, we have, what's at the back, there might be native wall paints at the back. Native wall plates, oh and glitter lambs that at the back there. So like I say, majority three quarters of this are British Indies and I would like to move these out and just keep the British Indies in here because I think that's a really cool draw to have. I'm trying not to go into too much detail because I'm aware that I'm probably going to talk a lot more about this once we've rearranged. I then have a whole drawer of 90. I am very lucky that I have been a reviewer from 90 from the start so I have a lot of the polishes that she's come out with so I definitely need to expand that into a second drawer because I have a huge overflow. This penultimate drawer is actually a really strange mix. Half of it is mainstream so we have OPI Infinite Shine which I'll probably put in the new OPI drawer. Um, a lot of Zoya that probably needs its own drawer and I then have the kind of like the in between mainstream and indie brands so I have Pretty Serious, I have um, Glam Polish, KB Shimmer and A England. They're just the brands to me that are so big that they're probably going to be expanding into that um, more like mainstream world and of course I have KB Shimmer in there too. 
last but not least, we have my drawer with all of my swatch sticks in. I'm probably about a year behind on my how like my swatch stick process. So obviously I have my label maker and I also have spare acetone in here as well. This will be moving. I'm not sure if I do want to get up to date with it, but I, it's going to be a long project, so I'm not sure when I'm going to be doing it. Um, and I will link down below the video that I did a long time ago on how I swatch and organise these swatch sticks here. Okay, so before I've organised, I think this is going to be the plan that I'm going to work towards. So I'm going to, in the two really white ones, because obviously over there I've got one that's off-white. In the two white ones, I'm going to have three drawers of OPI, and the third one's going to be OPI slash OPI Infinite Shine. Then two China Glaze, then kind of the in-between. So Sally Hansen, Models Own, maybe Barrier if I have space, Izzy London Beauty, um, Models Own, if I didn't say that. They're going to be in that drawer. Then in the second one of those, I'm going to have the Nail Care at the top, then Essie slash Zoya, any other mainstream, so like the Deborah Littman, the Illamasqua, the Orly, then a miscellaneous drawer, and a gap, one spare drawer, and then Nail Art at the bottom. That's the current plan. And then we can just have just an Indie Helmer, so it'll be UK Indies, two lots for nine zero, and then the Rant, then everyone else I'll arrange in some, for some fashion. That's the plan before going into it. I don't think I'm going to rearrange today because I don't think I have enough time because the sun's going down. So we'll pick this up another day, but I feel like I'm ready to hit it and we're going to get it done all in one all in one session. I've just fil finished filming for the day, so I thought I would show you my progress on my organising. I've just chucked this OPI box on the top and I've put all my overflow into the new Helmer. So this is the overflow that I had of Mainstream. This is the overflow for Indie. And this is the overflow from um, some glitter nail art stuff and obviously my new glitter lens that you must have seen in a review by now because hopefully I've put that up. That is leaving us with um, all of this space free. What I put in here is my polishes for the month for the next month. So these two you're going to be seeing in July's favourites. So I'm feeling a lot better about the fact that this being all clear other than to swatch. Um, so yeah, we're making progress. Slow, but we're making it. So I think I'm going to pause the video there. I know that I'm approaching about 12 minutes of footage because I've been editing as I've been going. So thank you so much for watching part one of two because there will be a second half obviously to this video. I can't leave you on a cliffhanger and not show you what happens next. So give me a big old thumbs up and subscribe and let me know down below what storage systems you use for your polish and I'll be back very soon with part two so you can see what the collection looked like at the end. Bye guys.